Genshin Impact has a lot of characters. 70 to be exact. Naturally, with so many characters, some are bound to get overlooked for one reason or another. Some examples are Kaya, Klee, Diona, Rosaria, Chi-Chi, Yoimiya, Sayu, Heizo, and Sino. One character I see overlooked the most, though, is Ningguang. I think this might be because of her Geo element. Honestly, I overlooked her too. But in this video, you will watch a Genshin player slowly fall in love with Ningguang. Here are the rules. I can only use Ningguang in battle. Any puzzles that require another element can be completed with another character. No co-op and all catalysts are allowed. Now let's see if you can beat Genshin Impact using only Ningguang. We start our journey by wishing and getting Ningguang, which I actually surprisingly have the footage for. One computer change later and we can start playing. The first three domains will give me a chance to learn how to play Ningguang. All of the temples were easy. Amber and Kai's domain had easy to deal with enemies and we could skip the entirety of Lisa's domain. The only part that required another character was the Pyro Monument and Amber's domain. I learned a lot from these domains, and let me explain it. Unlike other characters, Ningguang doesn't have a set attack pattern, but you can press forward while doing her normal attacks to attack a bit faster. Hitting an enemy or an entity with her normal attack will give you one Star Jade, of which she can have three of at one time. Charge attacking will send the Star Jade she has out to attack a random enemy. Her elemental skill deploys a Jade screen that can block almost all projectiles as well as deal a nice amount of damage. Her elemental burst shoots out six gems that can deal massive damage. Also, if you use your burst when a jade screen is deployed, it will shoot out an additional 6 gems. If you think that was complicated, learn to play Ito. That marks the end of Act 1. Now I have to get to AR-10 to be able to continue on to Act 2 of Mondstadt. It's really easy to get AR this early by doing quests, randomly exploring around, and collecting an Immoculi. Commissions also give us a steady source of experience. I was able to get to AR-10 by just roaming around and doing Adventure Hemp goals. This gives us a 10 pull on standard banner. So let's see what we get. You know, my main account doesn't have that still. So why here? I don't even want to look at it. The quests I did were Kaya's story quest, Amber's story quest, Zhangling's story quest, and Lisa's story quest. During this time I used Otherworldly story because none of the other catalysts I could get at the time were any good. The weapons I do want to get are Eye of Perception and the Widsith. Doing these quests gives us some Primo gems which can fuel my gambling addiction. Boom. 4 star, Ningguang, Eye of Perception, Ningguang, Eye of Perception. Ningguang! Oh my god! There's absolutely no way that just happened. I just see one as one of the best constellations in the game. It makes Ningguang's DPS capabilities crazy, and hopefully it will make this challenge easier. At high AR 16, I decided to finally start Monster Act 2 after ascending ourselves to level 40. This makes it so when we charge attack with Star Jades, we won't lose any stamina, which is good because the stamina consumption from the charge attack is brutal. We meet Venti, who takes us to the Deku Tree, where we fight Night of the Storm. Ningguang had an incredibly easy time against him, and now it's time to steal the Holy Liar. We were able to simply walk through there, and next we meet Deluk. The combined net worth in this room is insane. Next we have to do the Fatui hideout, and sadly we can't use the Red Man, but still the amount of wealth in this team is insane. Everything was pretty easy. The agent was kind of annoying when he turned invisible because of how unreliable Ningguang's normal tank is. Not hard by any means, but just slightly annoying. Next we have to get three teardrop crystals, and the first one is guarded by a ruin guard. It was incredibly easy because we're a catalyst character. Next we stroll into a hilly trail camp and steal from them. Next was the domain and all the enemies were easy. You are a fool. That's the end of Act 2. Now we have to get to Air 18 to be able to continue on to Act 3. But we're already Air 17, so we visit the Virgin Jade Chamber, and that's enough to get us to Air 18. Oh yeah, and our Air 17 rewards finally gets us a Geo Damage Bonus Goblet. I switched to Twin Nephrite at this time, and I think it's around here where I started to realize how good Ningguang truly is. 
All the fights leading up and inside of Storm Terror's lair were really easy. And now it's time to fight Devalin. So Ning Wang deals quite a bit of damage. Being a DPS, that means her normal attacks are pretty strong. So strong, in fact, that you can kill the Volin in one phase. Ning Wang's just crazy. Fatality. That marks the end of Mondstadt. And Venti's life. Now we have to get to AR-23 to continue to Leeway Act 1. But I'm personally in no rush. Let me remind you that Liwe is the land of Geo, and we can only deal Geo damage, so there will 100% be enemies that I cannot take down because they're immune to Geo. There are also a few required Geo enemies, so we're gonna need something to tackle them. I got distracted by somebody simping for Hazo! There's only two options try and get Eye of Perception from Wishing, or get Frostbearer from Dragonspine. They essentially do the same thing, which is give us a physical damage attack every so often. At the time of filming this, Eye of Perception was not on the weapon banner, so I really only had one choice unless I wanted to grind primo jumps heavily. And Dragonspine gives you a lot of primo jumps either way, so there's a chance I might get Eye of Perception before Frostbearer. I did not get Eye of Perception. What I do have is hours and hours and hours and hours of exploring in Dragonspine. I got my exploration over there up to almost 80% as well as every single Crimson Negate on the map. Yes, that includes the one where you have to feed the foxes five days in a row. Naturally, this gives us a lot of wishes, so let's spend some of the wishes we got. Excuse me, what? Even though it's a catalyst, and a pretty good one at that, I'm not going to use it because all the necessary materials to ascend it are found in Inazuma. With all the uh, gates I got, I could finally get the blueprints to Frostbearer. I had already collected the materials necessary to get it beforehand so I could automatically create it. Also at some point I got Widsith which I used on her before getting Frostbearer during Dragonspine exploration. Now I can finally start Act 1 of Liyue. We finally meet our main character and then Geodaddy dies and we have to go around and tell the Adepti about his death. First was Mooncarver, and it's fights like these where I think, would this be a lot more difficult than if it didn't get C1? Well, I don't have to worry about that because I did, which makes this fight really easy. If I didn't have that AoE constellation, that would make this fight and other fights in this challenge without a doubt a lot slower. Next was Mountain Shaper. I've been on a horrible run of form trying to find this guy's brother in the amber. I had to destroy over half of the amber on the mountain to find him. Next was Cloud Retainer, and we were able to skip her domain by climbing on this tree and then gliding her across the gap. Unscripted me here, I forgot to cover Zhao's part of the story quest. The only combat part is against this Ruin Hunter, and it wasn't hard at all. That concludes Act 1, and now I have to get to AR-25, but there's something I'm way more concerned about. Reaching AR-25 will unlock the Ascension domain, and we'll be able to ascend our characters as well. This is a good thing. But take a look at Ningguang's boss. At face value, it might just seem like Ningguang can't ascend past level 40, but that's not true because of Frostbearer. Ningguang's normal attacks actually deal quite a bit of damage to the pillars, but none of our attacks deal any damage to Gamel himself. Most of the time when we're able to drop them down, we can only attack once. By the way, if you're wondering why Amber's here, I am too. And just to prove I did the entire fight without using any other characters, here's the full speed lapse version. This battle in its entirety took 14 minutes and 42 seconds, and it only gave me one boss drop, so I had to do it again! And the worst part is all in all I need 14 of Gimel's drops, so that means that minimum I have to do this fight 7 times. At maximum, 14 times! I'm going to really resent the Geo Hypostasis by the end of this challenge, aren't I? Next we did the Ascension Domain, and out of all the characters I've done solo challenges with, Ningguang 100% did this the easiest. It only took just about 7 minutes to clear the entire domain. That domain gives us a few wishes and a few keys which we can use to get more Primo Gems. Let's see what we get from those wishes. It's time to get lit. It's time to get lit! Why couldn't I get that earlier when I was grinding for freaking Frostbearer? While this does give me more reliable and stronger non-geo damage, I still hate this game for giving it to me so late. 
I guess Frostbear is forever going to the bin. After this, we do some Spiral Abyss, which gives us some wishes. Why? Why? I think it's just a trend to get D look on every solo challenge that I do. But now seems like a thematically appropriate time to do D look story quest. After that, we did Razor story quest, and of course, Ning Wong had the easiest time with Boreas. Oh Lastly, we did Sing Jo story quest, which was also as easy as the others. When we completed that, we're at AR 27 and well past the point of being able to start Leeway Act 2. We meet the man that I want to do a solo challenge with, and then go to boil some rocks in Mondstadt. Since Ning Wong can't heat the pot, we try to call D Luke to see if he'll help. He's not picking up. This is a representation of how bored I get while replaying these Archon quests. Next was the teapot, and here's where we run into our first mandatory Geo enemy. This and the Geo hypothesis are the two reasons why I need Eye of Perception or Frostbearer. Lastly was the treasure hoarders at Guizhong Ballista. Once again, Ning Wong's C1 AoE made things really easy. Not like this would be any challenge without the constellation, but it made it easier. Now we can go and have a date with Zhongli, and that marks the end of Act 2. We only had to get a couple hundred more experience, and then we're able to start Act 3. First, we need to get to our house, which requires Animo. But Ning Wong was just able to blow on it, which was very surprising. <laughs> I really thought we would need an Animo character, <laughs> but it turned- Next, we have to take out our own soldiers at Guizhong Ballista. After that, we can finally meet our main character one-on-one. -on -one. That's short-lived though, and we go to meet the guy with the therapeutic voice, and he wants us to sing to the flowers. Da, 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 da. And of course, Ning Wong destroyed the Cryo Whopper flowers because she's just so good. Now it's time to fight Child, but I'm not worried about this fight at all. Ning Wong's destroyed every fight up to this point, so... From the victor, <laughs> Uh, well, the second attempt we were able to defeat him, so we'll chalk that first fight up to me being dumb. We don't even have to cover our style, and that means Leeway Act 3 is over. Now I have to get to AR 30 to begin Inazuma. We do also unlock the Jade Chamber Archon quest, which would allow me to rebuild my home, but I'm much more interested in doing the Dane's Leaf quest. There's a lot of Abyss Mages in these quests, but with Ning Wong's Jade screen, we were able to block most of their projectiles and especially made the Hydro Abyss Mage easier to deal with in the final fight of We Will Be Reunited, which often ends up being one of the hardest rooms in the game. Here, of course, it was easy, because Ning Wong's amazing. Also, when we get to AR-30, it's going to automatically increase our world level, which means more Gimel! These fights aren't hard, they're just incredibly boring. It takes just about 10 minutes to defeat them, and that 10 minutes is just running around avoiding attacks and attacking them once every 12 seconds when they drop. But can we take a moment to appreciate how well Ning Wong's been doing? Aside from the Geo hypothesis, she's been doing better than D Luke. I rewarded D Luke for his performance, so I guess I have to do the same for Ning Wong. But how should I ever reward her? Yeah, I bought my least favorite item in the game, what of it? First, we have to complete the prologue quest for Inazuma. Both the treasure hoarders and slimes are really easy, and same goes for the people in the tournament. Now we can finally go to Inazuma. The start of this quest is just a bunch of running around in Rito, which we don't really need to cover. First bit of combat was the transport mission. All the enemies were really easy, and now we have full range to explore Inazuma. For those of you who remember Kagura's Verity, I considered ascending it, but in the end, it's not worth it. It would take way too much effort for a little reward. Next, we have to break somebody out of jail, and all the Tenryo Commission soldiers were pretty easy to deal with. The only problem was the big guy's dash move, which I've never been good at dodging. That marks the end of Act 1, and now we have to clear Ayaka's and Yoimiya's story quest. This is my least favorite part of playing these, because I hate Ayaka's story quest, and Yoimiya's story quest is kind of boring. But with those done, we can start Act 2. The start of Act 2 is fighting the Raiden Shogun. We have one of the most perfect characters to combat her, because Raiden mostly relies on close range attacks, which is the opposite of Ning Wong. All of her long range moves are very easy to telegraph and dodge, and with Ning Wong dealing quite a bit of damage, it's really easy to take her down. Before saving the Virgin, I decided to get the materials necessary to ascend the Widsith. I don't think there's any more required Geo enemies in the Archon Quest, so now we can switch to our strongest weapon. After that, we save the Virgin and the Terminal Commission soldiers were pretty easy to deal with. We go to the Resistance Camp, and now it's time for the Archery Demonstration. <sighs> Alright. Can Ning Wong do this? Well, at first I thought yes, 
but after spending an hour and a half doing attempts, I realized that it is insanely luck based. There are two big problems here. First is Ningguang's Star Jades. Charge attacking is the most accurate way of hitting the targets, but if you have a Star Jade when you attack, it's more than likely going to hit one of the red targets. That's why you have to manage your Star Jades really well and carefully, and make sure you don't accidentally use one. The best example of this is Wave 3. I tried multiple times to hit both the targets with charge attacks, but it just would not happen. And even if I were, the next phase required me to have a Star Jade because the top one was too high to hit. So what I needed to do was normal attack the two dummies, or else I couldn't do Wave 4. I also had to make sure to charge attack so I lost my Star Jades that I got from the previous waves, but normal attacking these two dummies are very inconsistent. I tried desperately to find a consistent way to do it, but I just couldn't find it and it seems like it's very precise or just based on luck. Then there's wave 4, where you have to charge attack the bottom dummy and hope the star jades at the top one, which is very unlikely. I don't know if the star jade bases its aim off of distance, but it might because in all my attempts I got to here, I only had 3 that made it past. The second problem is the AoE constellation. Little did I know that that would be a curse in disguise here. Because if I didn't hit my target flawlessly, the AoE would hit a target that I'm not supposed to hit. But if you're able to make it past wave 4, then you'll be quickly stopped by wave 5. There are a lot more dummies in hard to hit locations, and the AoE constellation makes it so this wave might be impossible. I decided to bring Geo Traveler to give myself an elevation to hit the ones on the higher platforms. It was still difficult because the border around you doesn't let you go too high up. Also, one of them requires you to turn around, which you can't do when you're barely standing on a rock. <laughs> That's when I remember what Mistafeet did to get around that, and I used Fischl to turn around. After almost two hours, I was finally able to complete the archery demonstration. Well, yes! I told you, Arlie. Yes! Oh my God! I think oh. I understand what I was doing wrong now. Oh my posture was, was off, awful. and I didn't draw back. That was the worst force. thing I've ever done again. Seems I also need big thanks to Mistafeet for coming up with the Geo Traveler and Bow Character Strat. Now that we're finally done with that, we can go to the front lines to fight the Tenryo Commission soldiers, who are apparently powerful opponents. Couldn't tell. Now it's time for Act Three, and we started by bullying some Ronin. Next, we go to trigger some Electro Monuments, which we can't do, so we call on the Bird Lady. We quickly destroy the Lava Churl. Next we get to watch the visual equivalent of Nirvana, and then we go to the Delusion Factory, and this is the first true difficult part. It wasn't terribly difficult, it was just a little bit more difficult than it usually is. Particularly because of the Electro Hammer guy, who I hate with the bloodlust. After that we meet Hat Guy, and then immediately after meet Fox Girl. But who cares about those two, when we have... It's my second favorite character in the game! <laughs> Saw you! Next was the onslaught of Tenryo Commission soldiers, and once again, thank Morax for C1 Ningguang. Now it was time for Senora. I learned that some of Senora's projectiles can actually be blocked by the Jade screen and. Uh, oh. Phase 1's already over. Yeah, this fight's a joke. Ningguang absolutely destroys her. Now it's time for Raiden Shogun, and this might be even easier. The first phase was as easy as it was in Act 2, and the second phase didn't even take a minute and a half. With that, Inazuma Act 3 is over, and now we have to get to AR 35 to start Sumeru, as well as do the Chasm Dainsleaf quest. But those I'm not worried about right now because I have to fight Gimel. I need 8 of his boss drops, which means at minimum I need to fight him 4 times, with each fight taking around 12 minutes. On attempt 3, I only got 1, which meant I had to do this 5 times. Thankfully, after this, I'll never have to fight Gimel again. Next was the Chasm World Quest, and it was here where I experienced the scariest thing in Genshin Impact. Being chased by a Geo Bishop and two Geo Bishop Hatchlings while being only able to attack with Geo damage. Oh yeah, and there were also Geo Slimes. I was terrified. Either way, after that, we can start the Dainsleaf Chasm Quest. All the Black Serpent Knights were easy to deal with because they attack so slow, and the Abyss enemies are easily taken down with the power of Crystallize. I haven't been talking much about Crystallize, but it's a Morax end. It's the key reason why a lot of the Abyss Mage fights are really easy. That and the Jade screen. We're still at AR35 by that, so we finally decided to rebuild our house, and every fight in there was easy, including Beisht. One Wolf of the North later, and now it's time for Sumeru. First combat bit was the Withering Zone. All the fungi here were shut down very easily by Ningguang, and next was the Confusion Domain. 
It was pretty similar in difficulty to the Withering Zone, and then we go to Samira City to get our Akasha Terminal. But then I realized I had been playing for 12 hours straight and I should probably get off. We go to Port Ormos, and at Port Ormos we meet another Tycoon. Once again, the combined wealth here is crazy! After that we- Wait... Did I do the Ascension Domain? <laughs> After that we fight some fungi to test the knowledge capsule that we bought from the Tycoon. Next was the Aramites at the dock, and they were really easy as well. Now it's time for Act 2, which is entirely a lore arc and quest except for one fight, and that fight is easy, so let's move on to Act 3. We meet the Doctor! Then fight some Aramites in the forest before going to the desert to fight some Rift Hounds. Both fights were really easy, and some of the Rift Hounds were even weak to Geo. Now time for Act 4. The first fight was with more Aramites, who were even easier than before. Next was the Elazar Hospital, and all fights were pretty easy. Well, I guess I was wrong. Final part of Act 4 was the King Dash Rat Domain. All that were in there were a bunch of fungi, and we were able to skip the room with only Geo fungi, which would have definitely caused problems. Now we can finally start Act 5. First were more damn Aramites, and just like all the other Aramite groups, they were easy. Next, we finally have a challenge with the Fatui members. They can't really hit us because our Jade Screen and Crystallized Shields, but we can't really hit them either once they get their shields. I have special disdain for the Electro Hammer guy, who we had to fight twice here. Believe me, our troubles with Fatui members aren't ending anytime soon. Oh Lore happens, God. and now it's time for the Deus Foundry. Almost every Fatui member we fought here besides the Cryo Ceasing Mage and Geo Staff guy were annoying. The Electro Hammer guy and the Hydro Gun guy were tanky, the Pyro Gun guy can be annoying with his strong attacks, and the Animo Boxer can block my attacks. After we finally completed that, it's time for Scaramouche, who Ningguang destroyed faster than any other character. Ningguang is very strong, and when he gets stunned, he becomes super frail, which allows us to obliterate him. Lastly was the Boat Domain. The Rift Hounds were once again weak to Geo, and the Hilly Trolls on the boat were mostly projectile based, which the GH screen blocked. We finished off the Electro Lava Troll, and I think it's safe to say Hoyoverse wants you to use Ningguang in every team because of how friggin' good she is. I don't think anyone's gonna be surprised when I say this was one of the easiest Genshin challenges I've ever done. If it weren't for Kamel and Ningguang's troubles with the Fatui members, this would be my easiest challenge by far. Either way, on the tier list of difficulty, I'm placing it at Walk in the Park, and I think you guys understand why. I'm honestly mad at myself for overlooking Ningguang's true potential for so long. She's a very good character that can deal a lot of damage and be versatile in many roles. The next challenge will be a special one. Hmm.